Hello everyone, welcome to uh, the Purple Penny Weekly Coin and Banknote News video. Uh, my name's Mark. I own and run the Purple Penny along with my wife Catherine. We're a small coin and banknote dealer in the northern suburbs of Adelaide. Uh, we've been here for uh, five years in May next year. We've been doing these videos for somewhere between three and four years. We try to do them weekly. Uh, this will be the last video for the year because of course Monday, next Monday is Christmas Day and the Monday after that is New Year's Day. Uh, I'm still tossing up about doing a video on the 2nd of January. Uh, I think that will probably happen. Right, uh, last week was much more sensible because of course last week wasn't a $2.35 th anniversary folder release week. It's just a regular week last week. We still had a busy day on Wednesday and Saturday. Saturday was exceedingly busy, uh, much busier than Saturdays usually are. I'm not quite, quite sure what's happened there. Uh, I expect this week to be quiet because usually the week before Christmas is quiet. Everyone's given up trying to buy presents and things like that. Uh, Catherine finished her mail by, I think she said by 9.30 this morning, which is remarkably quick, so she's out there uh, getting a new stock out into the counters if you are coming in this week. Right, we'll just jump into the news here. First item is that we are closing. So we are closing there. Uh, this Saturday will be our last trading day for the year, uh, which is the 24th of December. And uh, we'll be reopening at 10 a.m. on the first Wednesday in January 2024, which is the 3rd of January. Uh, we are actually having another day off the following week, but I'll talk about that uh, via Facebook or whatever. So if you do need to come in and get coin collecting supplies, uh, you better get in by Saturday at 1 o'clock and uh, stock up on what you need because it will be shut for uh, all of the week after. Right, that's it for the Christmas closure. Let's just say a few hellos before we carry on to the next section. Hello Greg. Uh, hello Sam, Panther, hello Gary, I hope you're doing okay up in Cairns, Gary. <coughs> hello Ted, hello Peter, hello Ray, uh, yes Peter, we're having Christmas off. Hello Damien, hello Wendy, hello Susan, hello Daryl, and hello Gloria, Jason, Paul and Antonius. Thank you everyone for joining in. A uh, couple of preemptive apologies there, our renovations going on in the uh, shop next door, so if you hear a route or a drill or something, that's that. Uh, I've also got hay fever, so if I start coughing and spluttering, I do apologise in advance for that. Right, uh, next item in the news is this this jigger here. Uh, There's a Lloyd's auction that finished uh, in the last couple of weeks for a... Uh, a rose gold plated copper 1930 penny replica and you can see there it sold for eleven thousand uh, dollars i think when we've had these replicas in here before we sell them for 20 bucks or 25 bucks so lloyd's uh no it's not lloyd's it's uh gray's gray's auctions uh it their listing did have full disclosure there they said it was a, a replica coin they included Images of the Downey slash Macquarie Mint Certificate of Authenticity. Why you need a COA for a replica, I don't know. Uh, and included images of the packaging. And, and anyway, this was uh, forwarded to me by one of our regulars from a group called uh, Gray's Auctions Rip Me Off or something like that. And I would contend that Gray's did nothing wrong here. They just sold a replica coin. They were fully upfront with it being a replica and included packaging and all of that sort of stuff there so uh, you know at what point does the buyer have to take responsibility for their own ignorance and i'll call it ignorance because it's ignorance it's not a real 1930 penny no one said it was a 1930 penny uh it doesn't look like a 1930 penny and uh i suspect they won't pay uh i suspect they won't pay but if someone did pay eleven thousand dollars for that then they really need to uh have a look at themselves I guess. Now just a couple more hellos. Hello Paul, Peter, Powell, Brett and Samantha said do they not give authentication? They did give authentication Samantha. They gave authentication that this is a modern Downey slash Macquarie Mint replica. They didn't say it was a real 1930 penny. At no 
point in the listing does it say it's a 19, real 1930 penny? It says many times it's a replica. So someone bid it up to $11,000. Uh, I've got no idea. I've got no idea why. Susan says, I got stung by Grace twice. There were written valuations are a joke. Now, Susan, written valuations are usually retail valuations. And... Uh, usually the high retail valuations and you know the rule of thumb for most valuations is you're lucky if you can get a third of what a written valuation says something is worth unless you want to set up a retail shop and price everything up really high and just wait for people to come along and buy them right who else is here uh, hello Nelson hello Angela hello Jason was there a reserve well if there was a reserve Jason someone still bid over it it's just very very strange things very strange things right next item in the news uh, thank you to Peter Andrews for the next uh, the next item in the news he's supplied me with some data this morning which uh, we've popped into a graph uh, talking about the $2.35th anniversary folders uh, I saw one sell this morning on social media for $330 including postage so given it's going to cost $15 to post it, that person has sold it for, uh, what, $315, uh, which is about $90, $90 profit. Uh, and uh, the price is certainly falling back. So Peter did send me a really great data set this morning of all of the eBay results, auctions and buy it nows of 35th anniversary folders. And he formatted it in a, a different graph type that I've not used before, so I've uh, attempted to replicate that. So what we've done there is we've grouped together all the 35th anniversary sales on eBay by day, uh, starting at the left there on the 5th of December and finishing up today on the 18th of December. So there's two things you can note from that. One is, is that the price is dropping. And the other is is that the uh, disparity in the high and the low prices for each day is compressing as well. So what does that mean? Uh, the disparity means, I believe, uh, this is what I think, that those who are desperate to buy one uh, probably have one now. Uh, they don't feel the need to just go and pay a higher price on eBay just to get one. Uh, so they've all got one now or they're waiting uh, to get one in the EQL ballot that the Mint will do next year sometime. Uh, the other reason is that uh, the only thing that the sellers have to go on is price and if you are a reseller of these things and uh, you are asking a higher price and you're seeing all the lower price items sell, you will start dropping those prices and the prices will compress up. Now, interestingly, uh, the sales that Peter has recorded for today have all been $400 or under. And given that eBay fees are about 15%, so those people are losing about $60 in fees. Uh, so you're at that sort of $300 to $340 of revenue, which is about sort of $65 to $100 profit for those people. So will those prices keep dropping? Uh, don't know. It's just pure speculation, of course. Uh, but my feeling is it'll probably uh, settle to around $300 and then in the long term it might start creeping up. As Peter says, they are not a rare coin. There's 35,000 sets. The Mint uh, has priced it appropriately at $235. I know a lot of people feel like that's expensive, but uh, they've sucked a lot of that money out of the secondary market and I feel like that has controlled the price a lot. Uh, it's stopped people, you know, being able to buy 10 or 15 or 20 sets to resell them because, you know, 10 times by $2,235 is over two grand, and for a lot of people that's a lot of money. Now, you know, is it a bad thing that the Mint's getting more of the money? Well, I don't know. Is it a bad thing that resellers aren't getting more of the money? Yeah, I think it's probably a good thing. Uh, none of those resellers pay tax or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think the Mint's handled this very well, and if the EQL thing goes smoothly, uh, from what I hear, the EQL launch through Winyard Coins went smoothly. If it goes smoothly through the Mint, then, uh, you know, I feel like the Mint has handled things pretty well with this release. Right, let's have a look at a few more comments here. Thank you, Antonius, for your good wishes to everyone here. Hello, Alison. Uh... Ted says that 1930 penny replica is an example of what also happens at other auction houses, e.g. empty RAM $1 and $2 coin folders sell for $60 or so 
when they have an RRP of $10, even when it says no coins. Well, uh, I believe the term is, I won't say the term, but there is a, a rather uh, derogatory term for people who bid on things without knowing what they're bidding on. Uh, we certainly have had people come in here with lots that they've purchased at local auction houses, attempting to sell them to us, and then looking in our cabinets and realising that we're selling them for less than what they paid. So uh, there's no doubt people do get caught up in auctions, and because they are all online these days, people that are stuck at home or perhaps from distances from major cities, it's the only way they can buy things, so they chase them up. Uh, hello, Patrick. And... Uh, Ted says, is the term geniuses? No. No, it's not. Uh, I try to only say positive things on this, this video, so Ted, if you want to send me a message, I'll tell you what the term is offline. Right, next item of news is uh, the RBA Governor, Michelle Bullock, was in the news this week, and this was uh, terribly reported. Uh, she was, the, the reporting I read said that uh, the RBA governor was going to impose a fee on people who wanted to use cash. In reality, what she was saying is that because of the uh, drop in uh, cash payments, you know, we've, we've gone from 60% cash payments to 15% cash payments in the last several years, that the actual cost of distributing cash uh, hasn't increased, but certainly uh, the variable costs have, the variable income from it has decreased. So. Uh, security companies don't have to deliver as much cash. They still have to have all those trucks and employees and things like that. It has led to some consolidation in the security industry and the RBA governor was suggesting that perhaps heavy cash users such as banks and supermarkets uh, should be footing the bill or at least some of the bill for the movement of cash around Australia. Uh, obviously the banks and supermarkets want the government to form a utility, a cash transport utility to uh, fund the movement of cash around the place. Obviously the government wants the heavy users to foot the bill for it, but I suspect uh, there'll be something in the middle there where big cash users such as banks and so on do uh, group together and uh, subsidise security companies for moving the cash around, and then the government will probably subsidise uh, remote cash deliveries. Australia is a big place and uh, it is very sparsely populated. It's very difficult to take models from uh, Europe. For example, in uh, Denmark, they have a cash delivery utility. Uh, but of course, Denmark is you know, a fraction of the size of the state of Victoria and has several million people in it, whereas Australia only has 22 million people in uh, a very large continent. So the models don't transfer. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. No doubt if the banks pay for cash uh, cash deliveries, uh, they'll pass that on to all of us uh, via extra fees and charges. Next item is uh, a study that was released this week by the European Central Bank just looking at what the environmental impact of uh, Euro notes were in Europe and it turns out that it's actually the equivalent of you driving your car for eight kilometres and the entire environmental impact of the use of notes in Europe is uh, less than 0.01% of each person's yearly environmental impact. So it's not just the production of the notes, it's the disposal of the notes, the distribution of the notes, ATMs and things like that. So it's the complete life cycle of the note and the European Central Bank has managed to actually decrease that environmental impact by 35% in the last 20 years or so. So kudos to them for doing that. I will just say that uh, if you don't like the mince bamboo packaging, uh, they have to do that as part of their own environmental requirements about reducing the environmental cost uh, for collectible coins. So that's why they do that. Bank of Palestine was in the news this week, of course. Uh, of course, there are a lot of troubles in uh, this area of the world. I won't go into the politics of it because we don't do politics here, but uh, the southern and central parts of Gaza did experience a huge cash shortage and the Bank of Palestine had to organise a pickup from uh, branches in the north of Palestine to get cash down into the, uh, the south. So the United Nations and, uh, and the Bank of Palestine 
uh, formed a convoy that went up to the north of Gaza during the ceasefire and they collected 900,000 notes, which is 180 million shekels worth of banknotes, almost a thousand kilos of banknotes. Uh, they filled a small shipping container and they were shipped down to southern and central Gaza for distribution. The uh, economy in Gaza is very cash based and interestingly there's just six ATMs in the central and southern parts of Gaza uh, for coin for notes to be uh, distributed and you can see a line there of people waiting, waiting at an ATM and apparently at the moment the Bank of Palestine is actually having to secretly ship cash around to keep those ATMs running so uh, yeah it's interesting that even in uh, places of conflict like this that uh, the need for money to keep the wheels of commerce turning is still there last item of the day is Denmark who are in the process of withdrawing uh, banknotes so all the banknotes issued in Denmark from 1944 to date are still legal tender and interestingly all of our Australian banknotes are still legal tender uh, but apparently the old banknotes in Denmark are very hard to spend because uh, younger people that staff the shops and uh, for private transactions don't recognise what those banknotes are. So the government of Denmark has decided to withdraw those notes. So every note prior to year 2000 is being withdrawn and will be demonetised at some point. And the 1000 kroner note, which is about 218 Australian dollars worth, is also being withdrawn regardless of the age of it to uh, help reduce money laundering and uh, organised crime because those large value notes are used uh, a lot in those two areas, exactly the same as the 150 are here in Australia. Right, what I wanted to do today was talk about, uh, I guess, some highlights and lowlights for the year, but we will just have a look at some comments here. Uh, so, hello Andrew, how are you? Hello Dora, how are you? Hello Jason, Charles, Peter, uh, Gwen, so a bunch of new faces here today. Thank you everyone for joining in. So Ma Sam says, my auntie only deals in cash. She doesn't trust FPOS. There's still a lot of people that deal in cash. I think there'll always be a need for cash. Uh, I know the banks would love to get rid of it, but uh, I don't think that will happen. There will always be a place for cash. And Carolyn, hello, how are you? Antonius says he agrees. My mum cannot use the card or ATM. She always goes to the teller to withdraw money. Thank you for sharing. Gloria says she likes the bamboo packaging. Peter says I always go to the teller to withdraw money as it keeps people in jobs. Thanks, Peter. Uh, I've got a few other. Hello, Mike, how are you? Hello, Angela. Do collectors consider packaging part of the collection? Angela, absolutely. Uh, packaging is very important and it is no there is no doubt that mint product without the original packaging is less saleable than mint product with the original packaging similarly mint product with damaged packaging is less saleable than mint product with pristine packaging uh, patrick says when the power goes out you cannot pay using fpos but having cash means you can keep going thank you for that hello lynn hello craig and finally nelson says Sometimes it takes too long, especially when there is only one teller. Thank you for that. That's very true. Uh, Susan says, I took a $200 coin to the casino one night and spent two hours arguing with them about whether or not it was legal tender. So Susan, just because something is legal tender doesn't mean that a, a shop has to accept it. Uh, as you would know from COVID, many businesses stopped accepting cash because of misguided concerns about uh, hygiene and there's nothing illegal about that you don't have to accept cash and similarly you don't have to accept credit card so that is the retailer or businesses uh, option to do that uh, I guess they need to weigh up uh, the impact on their business if they do decide to do that right let's have a look at my at our 2023 highlights and lowlights I will thank uh, a couple of people who shared theirs on the uh, on the announcement video post we did on Facebook, right? Uh, so, 2023 coin collecting in the news. I don't think there's any doubt that this year there's been more news stories in uh, the general media, uh, usually online, and then uh, newspaper, and then the actual uh, nighttime news. I don't think there's any doubt that coins haven't been have been in the news more this year than any time that I can remember. 
maybe if we go back to 1966 and decimal changeover, they were in the news more then, but certainly this year they have been in the news more than ever. Many of the online news channels, uh, Yahoo, uh, Nine Online News and places like that, have, a coin, have been having a coin article once a week and have done so for several months. Now we can, I guess, question the accuracy of those stories. Uh, we can question the reason that journalists are publishing those stories. Uh, but we can't deny that it is a sign that coin collecting is a, uh, a living and popular and growing hobby. And for all of us, I know it's annoying to not get new releases when you want them and to deal with resellers and things like that. Uh, we should see that as a good thing. Uh, rather than a bad thing. Uh, the strength of the hobby is a good thing for everyone. Now, next point here is new release demand. So I think back to uh, November last year for the Red Poppy, uh, the 2022 Red Poppy. That was, uh, that really opened our eyes to the demand that there was out there in the marketplace, just with regards to the number of people that lined up out the front of our shop and how much the phone rang. Uh, it was really uh, the first time we'd seen that at all, you know, in our whole time as being distributors. Uh, but this year, that has happened several times, and uh, it happened with the Bathurst coin, it happened with the World Heritage coin, and of course it happened with uh, the $2 anniversary set that was released a couple of weeks ago. Next surprise for the year was a $5 coin. Now, $5 coins are without doubt the least popular decimal coins that there are. Uh, we sell a lot of five dollar coins in here for between five and ten dollars each uh, really just close to face value and depending on how many we've got if people bring them in here sometimes we refuse to buy them because uh, you know how many parliament house five dollar coins do you really need so you know five dollar coins are the least popular denomination in my belief uh, and when that five dollar world heritage coin came out we, Catherine and I thought it would be popular because it was a quite a nice looking coin. We never expected it to be as popular as what it was. And for a unloved denomination, it was really good to just see the Mint do a good job with a nice looking coin, with a good bit of packaging, a reasonable price point. And I think they were released for $30 each and they still sell pretty strongly for between $60 and $85 or so, you know, uh, several months after release. So quite a nice looking coin and uh, if you don't have one, well worth chasing one down. Let's have a look at some comments here before we move on. Uh, Sam says, I try to pay cash at the Purple Penny, but then I start looking around and spend more and need to pay via FPOS for a portion. Thank you for that, Samantha. That's much appreciated. Pay, pay with cash. And Adam says that journalists have very questionable uh, accuracy. And Damien says the $5 Heritage coin seemed to get a big bump from the news too. And I think Damien, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, coin collecting has been in the news. And if the Mint partners with a uh, an organisation like they did with the World Heritage coin and they have a, uh, a press release scheduled before release day and uh, the consciousness of the public is already focused on coins and that is going to make any coin sell well and it probably doesn't matter too much what it is. Uh, so we should, as I said, as collectors, we should be pleased about that. Now, it's odd that I would have the, uh, I would have the 35th anniversary $2 set as a, uh, a highlight considering it only happened two years ago. But I've got to tell you here in the shop, we've been dealing with that bloody thing for several months. Uh, of course, people saw the uh, currency determination for the $2 set and for several months there's just been rumours there were rumours just flying around about this set and what coins were going to be in it and how much it was going to be and what the release date was and we just had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls uh, from people all over Australia for months before it was released asking to put their name down for it and of course you would know, know by now that we don't take names for uh, products that haven't been officially announced and for sort of hyper competitive products like that folder we don't take names at all. Um, there's no doubt that it's the biggest release that we've ever seen uh, for a product that was $235 and $235 is a lot of money for most collectors. 
uh, for us to have sold as many as we did as quickly as we did was just uh, beyond belief, really. I mean, we're not talking about a $15, $2 coin here, we're talking about a $235 set that people wanted to spend money on. And, you know, with the cost of living and things like that, $235 is a lot of money. Uh, so, biggest release we've ever seen. And, uh, again, I feel like the Mint handled it well. They kept their, uh, their light under their bushel and didn't announce it until the last second. Uh, which prevented a lot of eBay pre-sales and things like that and they only shipped it out to uh, authorised dealers like us in the last minute which again stopped uh, those authorised dealers who don't play the game right from selling them through third parties before release day. Uh, so yeah, a great looking set, uh, nice packaging, all the coins are quite nice and if you manage to get one congratulations it'll sit there and you'll do well with it I believe over the years. Right, next item, uh, the new effigy. So, uh, King Charles, of course, uh, succeeded his mother last year and was coronated earlier this year. And uh, the Royal Australian Mint, more than a year after the Queen's passing, did announce uh, the new effigy and uh, announced the design at a release a couple of months ago, I think by the sculptor Martin Tyler, I think that's his name, who's a sculptor for the Royal Mint. And, uh, and of course they started appearing last week. At the beginning of last week they started appearing at Banks and here in Adelaide and a couple of other places around Australia. Uh, dollar coins, the Mint did say they would be releasing dollar coins first. And it is a bit of a head spin to hold a dollar coin that doesn't have a Queen's face on it. It just doesn't look right, it doesn't look like Australian money. Uh, and it is no doubt the biggest change to Australian coinage since 1966. Uh, it is a real difference for us and I guess in a couple of years time, oh thank you Charles, it's not crowned, it's crowned not coronated, thank you for correcting me there. Uh, in a couple of years time when we're seeing five cent pieces and ten cent pieces with the king's head on them then uh, you know it really will sink in. So that was a big change there. Next item, we bought a 1930 penny this year. I never thought we'd have a real one. Uh, we've had so many fake ones come in, including uh, a fake one that was sent to us, teachers were sent to us via email. Someone had uh, purchased a fake one and then tried to damage it to hide the fact that it was a fake one. I never thought we'd have a real one come in. We did have a real one come in uh, about six months ago. Uh, the gentleman took it away and then brought it back in a month or two later and we bought it off of him, sent it to PCGS, had it authenticated and uh, we're still sitting on it. It's nice to own one. If you don't know the 1930 penny, uh, it is the most iconic coin in Australian numismatics. Certainly the most well known one. Uh, and uh, it's, I guess, a bit of a rite of passage as a collector and a, and, and a coin dealer to own one. and when we sell it I guess we'll be sad when it goes but it is nice to own a real 1930 penny. Now this is a follow on from last year's wrap up, uh, Golden December. I don't know what it is about December but it's brought out the gold. Uh, we've bought several dozen gold coins in the last few weeks and you've probably seen a bunch of them appear on our website. I don't know why, people raising money for Christmas or I'm not sure what it is but uh, it was a real pleasure uh, a week or so ago to buy a whole group of German and American and British gold coins all from the same lot and uh, handle coins that we haven't seen before. I love handling coins I haven't seen before. Uh, none of them uh, have any great numismatic value uh, and they can all be bought on our website for sort of between 10 and 25 percent above the gold price and uh, you know but it is a real thrill to see coins that I haven't seen before. It just happens very rarely and it was great in one day to see nine or ten coins that I hadn't seen before. It was a real highlight for me. Last point, I guess is a low light, and Catherine did bring this up, is where are the two dollar rolls? You probably, if you think back, there were no two dollar rolls issued this year. Uh, I think the last two dollar roll was uh, the Peacekeeper last year in 2022. So we didn't get a two dollar roll this year. In fact, I think the only two dollar we got was the Vietnam coin was the only distinctive $2 that we got. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the Mint does with that, whether they uh, have had enough of $2 coins, uh, $2 rolls I should say, or whether next year we'll get uh, two or three different $2 rolls. But yeah, interesting observation that Catherine made there, no $2 rolls issued 
for 2023. So a very interesting thing. Right, let's uh, go back to camera only and we'll look at some comments here before we move on. Uh, Adam says, let's hope the Mint doesn't do a 10th anniversary of the planetary set in a few years' time. Oh, help, help me. Help me. If that happens, I'm going to go crawl under a rock and pretend I'm somewhere else. Uh, John says, thank you, Catherine and Mark, for all your valuable information. That's no worries, John. Uh, Peter says, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. And yes, cash is king. Samantha says she likes the new effigy, and it is odd to see the, uh, the king instead of the queen. Ray says, Merry Christmas to everyone. Thanks, Ray. Peter says it took him 53 years to get a 1930 penny. Uh, you got more perseverance than I do, Peter. I haven't waited 53 years for anything. Uh, hello. Oh, hang on a second. Stop moving. Hello, Glenn. Thank you. Daryl says, Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you, you Daryl. And thank you, Damien. Uh, Damien says, I imagine there could be a Charles Coronation $2 coin. Well uh 60th anniversary of the royal australian mint next year uh, it's also 80 years since uh d-day next year so there's two possibilities uh i will just catherine just sent me a bit of news before about the mint um so the mint has just announced a ballot for 10 people to win the chance to strike the last 10 coins of 2023 and as usual so they've also announced a ballot to strike the first hundred coins of 2024 and uh, what is really interesting is that they're closing their retail shop at the mint on the 29th of january and uh, moving it to the canberra museum and they're not expecting it to reopen until spring next year so it's going to be closed for sort of eight or nine months and they're saying they're giving it a refresh for their 60th anniversary so uh, if they're giving the mint shop a refresh for the 60th anniversary i could imagine them striking a coin for the 60th anniversary would it be a two dollar i don't know but uh, we shall see right that's it for 2023 uh thank you to everyone for taking part thank you for the regulars who watch these videos thank you everyone who's watching on youtube if you made it this far uh, everyone please have a safe christmas and happy new year and uh catherine and i are eternally grateful for everyone who supports us here in the shop and via our website everyone who helps us out and peter you've just spoiled my party 2025 is the 60th anniversary did they not open in 1964 no, they didn't. They had their opening in 65, didn't they? Okay, so forget the idea that there's going to be a $2 coin for the RAM next year. It'll be the year after. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your support. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, stay safe, travel safe, eat a lot, try not to drink too much, uh, hug your families, and we'll see you next year. Bye for now, everyone.